Crisis of the New Millennium, David Cameron BM and his Conservative Party follow suit of the US government after years of civil unrest and continued rioting in cities across the nation by employing a domestic military presence equivalent to martial law, and in turn creating a one-party political system temporarily during times of economic and global crisis. A singular governing body is created. Any opposition is either absorbed into the current government or eradicated. The public's involvement is completely removed. There are no election races or campaigns. There is no free market. All businesses and services become nationalized, introducing control policies that breach civil and human rights. Most sectors are consolidated, with any excess being a casualty of the survival strategy. Free speech is no more, and can either be classified as treason or terrorism. Members of the public, previously be referred to as the voting minority, tried to resist, tried to protest, but they were crushed. Members of various groups being imprisoned or mysteriously disappearing from their homes. After over a hundred years, the death sentence is reinstated. The Isle of Man and the Isle of Wight, along with all other offshore land masses, including oil refineries, are converted into prisons. The wardens of these prisons are effectively internal judicial systems, having carte blanche to extend the sentences of inmates and having dangerous inmates executed. There are no more unions. There is a single national bank that doubles as a pay unit for workers. Currency has been converted to state credits that can be used for essentials only. All housing is claimed by the state and redistributed as they see fit. This does not benefit those who need it. The news is filtered. The media is filtered. Music and the arts are filtered. The World Wide Web is almost completely locked down. All forms of personal computers are confiscated by the state and destroyed. Anybody caught in ownership of said computers are immediately arrested and prosecuted without a jury present. Internet-ready computers on closed networks are issued by the government. 24-hour monitoring is in place and access to the internet is only available with full identification. The state education minister amends the curriculum in all forms of education. One of the edits that is made is to remove any IT related learning, be it IT, software or hardware engineering. Any who are already versed in these skills are conscripted by the government. Those that resist are imprisoned, where they later disappear through varying means. Most are killed whilst resisting arrest. Those remaining who have not been conscripted and have not been arrested get off the grid. They go to ground, creating new identities, fleeing the country, and in very few instances. Some stay to continue fighting for the rights of humanity, for the freedom of information and expression. From the shadows, there is little they can do now. The vast majority of society has been indoctrinated and enslaved. There is an apartment. Our current rendezvous point. You 
must be inside this apartment, alone, without any electronic devices, between 10 and 10 past 10 p.m. District 9, Sector 7, on the corner of Kappa 8 and Omega 12, facing the military barracks named Justice to your north. If you arrive before, after, with devices, or with company, you die. Turn right. There is a street with a row of hedges to your right. Inside these hedges until they come to an end. Examine them, and inside you will find a key attached to a lace. Once you've acquired the key, you will notice that you're at the entrance of a courtyard. Proceed into the courtyard and enter the second block on your right. inside, you will be faced with a staircase. Go down, not up. Turn right. In front of you will be an apartment door with a plant pot. Underneath the plant pot. Now enter the apartment. You know, let's not have you setting off to meet your forefathers, only to greet them with half of a face. I'd like you to calm yourself. Remember that you wanted this meet to take place, and then follow my instructions with clinical precision. Don't panic. I'm going to cover your eyes now. Using a hood. I'm going to take you inside now and sit you down. Once you're seated, do 
not make eye contact. I need you to keep your head down and not make a move. I'm going to remove the hood now and begin asking you some questions. I need you to keep your voice way down and avoid making any noises or sudden movements. We can't be detected. One other thing. You must answer my questions instantly, without hesitation. No matter what's going on. If you don't, I might have to kill you. I'm gonna search you now. I'll take anything I find. You can have them back if and when you leave. Okay, question time. And remember what I said to you. Describe that person for me. What's your name? What's your date of birth?
what do you do for a living? You're serious, aren't you? And how exactly are you able to acquire unedited raw footage of cabinet meetings? <laughs> They're actually cocky enough, confident enough, to have surveillance at their own <laughs> blacklisted secret highly illegal conversations. And your man is media manager for the Central Government Security Services. You know they'd kill him, right? You know they'd kill him, his family. They'd kill his family's friends and acquaintances. They'd kill them all if they caught him. Okay, no 
iPod docs. It's just going to be a straight up media processing machine. This is what I've got. Okay, first up. We've got a Salmon Z2 Plus ATX mid tower case. It's got front mesh cooling. It supports up to seven fans. It's got a bottom PSU installation to keep the heat at the bottom. It's got a black interior, makes it more difficult to see. Powerful HDD cooling system. And it has tool free installation with anti vibration rubber, makes it really easy to put together. It has USB 2.0 and 3.0 ports as standard, front and bottom dust covers, and it also has rear tube apertures for our optional liquid cooling systems. Next up, this is the Corsair CX750 ATX power supply unit. This is more than enough for this computer. You don't have to worry about too much power consumption, okay? Next up, the Asus P8277VLX motherboard. It employs a power regulation system called the DigiPlus VRM. This adjusts the CPU voltage and VRM frequency using automated modes or user-defined profiles. You can edit those user-defined profiles yourself if you know what you're doing. I suggest you stick to the automated mode. This is the Intel Core i5 processor. The heatsink comes in the box. The heatsink. It's basically a large block of superconductive metal that draws heat away from the processor card and out into the metal block that the fans can then cool. Yeah. Next up, the Asus GeForce GTX 770 graphics card. It has 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. It has various connections including HDMI, DP, dual DVI, and HDCP. It also has DirectX 11 and OpenGL 4.3 support. It's more than enough for what you want to do. So this one is a Crucial M500 2.5 inch SSD. It's got a 240 gigabyte capacity. No, I th don't think you should have any more than that. I mean, you can have more than that if you want to internally, but honestly, I think you want to keep your internal memory lower for the kind of thing that you're trying to do. Next, I have Kingston HyperX 8 gigabyte DDR3 RAM. It comes in two 4GB sticks. Next up is this Asus VE247 LCD monitor. It supports resolution up to 1080p, full HD, as you and I might know it. I'm assuming that the surveillance systems don't record in 4K, right? Okay. So this should do just fine. Plus it's cheap. Yeah, I thought you'd like that. Next is this Lacy 3TB HDD. It is USB 2.0 and 3.0 compatible. I think the advantage here is to have a larger amount of storage externally rather than internally. Um, for rendering and processing media, it's faster to have it on an external device from the software that's processing the material, traditionally. And also you may need to display.
no softball transport sensitive information at very short notice in the near future. Next is this Lexar SDXC UHS-1 64 gigabyte SD card. Uh, the UHS-1 rating is the highest speed rating you can get for an SD card for transfer speeds, yeah. This is the Lexar USB 3.0 card reader. It's pretty small and pretty compact. It comes with this USB 3.0 cable also. Okay, so that's your computer. I'll throw in a HP keyboard and mouse too, so don't worry about that. Yeah, some Sennheiser headphones too. Yeah, it's got a built-in headset. Look, okay, don't worry if you don't understand. You don't need to understand. Just write down your address on here. I'll put the thing together, alright? I'll get all the software that you'll need installed onto it. I'll anti-government the hell out of this thing. They won't be able to find you, they won't be able to track you. And then I'll bring it to you. You will own no company and no electronic devices, just like today. I'll even give you some tutorials. Editing, transcoding files for uploading, streaming, transferring. Yeah, that sort of thing. Sorry, man. What was your name again? 